get bullet points and we just lightly edit. Fantastic. Okay. Great, Brent. So take it away. Our goal in this recording is to document how to set up the development environment for build it blocks. Uh, Brent and Ari are the original designers of this WordPress application. Um, and Rodrigo, Ryan, and Dan are um, uh, all leading the charge now to keep our Build It Blocks application um, current. Okay, Brent. All right. So, what I did while John was giving that overview is I began making a Google slideshow to pretend I came prepared. All right. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> to explain WordPress um, in the simplest way to think of, there's three things that we should pay attention to. Um, there's files, there's the database, and then there's the server environment. Um, the server environment is going to consist, like the two biggest things that matter are which PHP version and what MySQL version are being used. Um, ideally, it's good to know what operating system and all that kind of stuff. If it's Apache, Nginx, whatever, because that will help you minimize troubleshooting if you run into an error. But I've moved platform to platform before. And really, if you are on the right PHP version and the right MySQL database version, it usually works fine. I think they use good practices. So I know like Linux, uppercase, lowercase matters and so on. I'm pretty sure they architect did their backend well enough that it handles all that for us, which is why off the shelf sometimes works wonderful. Um, less to think about, right? Um, okay. Database is going to be where everything is stored. Um, whenever you have uploads or anything like that, like files, images, videos, um, you update a theme or add a plugin for a new feature. Those files alone do nothing. The database kind of connects the dots. It creates the URL paths. It tells the platform everything. So if you lose your database, I would argue the database is probably the most important thing to not lose because you can always trial and error and figure out what PHP and MySQL version from your database, though it would be painful. You can probably figure out what plugins are active and what themes you need to download. Um, lose this, you lost all the work is how I look at it. So that guy matters the most. And then files, I drew a bunch of bubbles around it because I want to break it down to a few pieces um, just so you guys understand the, how WordPress works in the back end. We are going to have plugins, which are functionalities. And I think we went through this before when we set up Builder Blocks, but it's good to recap. And I, I liken this to a car. Um, but, you know, plugins will be functions. Themes is kind of like how it looks. And the core files is almost like the engine that runs WordPress. And then the uploads folder is anything you you actually upload through the backend, through the dashboard. That's not a plugin or a theme. Um, th that might be PDFs, that could be videos, that could be images, and so on. Um, now, to give the car analogy, I like to give with this is the framework is kind of like the bare bones chassis, with like the engine, right? So you have like the core of WordPress running. You have no no body kit on your car, no outer skeleton of the car. It's just bare bones that drives. Plugins, you don't have any plugins yet, right? So there's no radio, no seat warmers, and so on. Car runs, functions as it's supposed to. That's with the core files. Then you add a theme. That's like the outside of the car. How do you want your site to look? Um, and then from there, you have plugins, which is like, what functions do you want? Do you need like a cool radio? Do you need a GPS? Like all the bells and whistles that kind of make the car unique. Because if you strip any car down to the wheels, the chassis and the engine, besides how fast they go and how quickly they break, they're pretty much the same thing, right? Um, you build it up and then you make it unique. And that's what these guys are. And I guess uploads would be like what you throw in your car, like your luggage or something. I really haven't thought that far ahead with that analogy. Um, so this is great. So, great, Brent. Keep going. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to kind of just live edit this and then we can maybe make this into something more presentable later. Um, let me drop in a text box. So for tools um, in access, let's start with access. Once, once WordPress is installed, um, you don't really need too much um, to get in there. Let's see. So you need the login URL which would be on your server. Um, so you just go to the 
you know, your site.com. And usually it's slash WP dash admin. Some people will change that for security reasons and stuff. We can look at that later, but it would be something like that. Then you get presented with, Hey, give us your username or email and password. So then you just need, you know, credentials or a user account. So, um, Brent, can we be more specific here or you can, can you tell us where we go to get specific URLs? Yes. Uh -huh. Great. Yes. Yeah. So basically the build it blocks website, let's go there. What is up.com? I think it's slash BIB, but let's uh, see. Is this cool. It's the what was the bottom one there? Oops, yeah, thank you, you got it. Great, great, great. Wait, this is the older one. I think I miss 2021. Yeah, that's it. Right. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So with that, um, what we're going to want to go to is let's do a sub bullet and it should be WP dash admin. Mm -hmm. I believe that would be it. And we can double check. Yes. And if my memory serves me right, right. It should be B I Y support. Wow. How do you remember yeah. this? Um, robot sushi one. Yes. Well, to be honest, if I ever had a hacky, John, I'd start with this. Because <laughs> yeah, no. um, I know we use that across everything. Yeah, no, no, sec <laughs> no secrets at Build It Yourself. <laughs> yeah. It makes it easy, though. It makes it easy to remember. Yeah. Um, all right. So now we're in the back end. So that's one side of this, right? So that's access. I keep forgetting. Can we put I'm that insane. in the documentation, Brent? Uh, it's BIY support at gmail.com and robot sushi one or dollar sign robot sushi one. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Please chime in. Uh, and Dan and Brent and Ryan, if you have any questions, imagine that you want to set up this development environment. So um, now's the time to ask Brent questions. Great. Perfect, Brent. Yeah, and I don't know exactly your guys' path in life, but I'll tell you, knowing how to make a WordPress website, you can definitely do that as a side hustle and make some money if you ever need to. It's a very good skill, and it's lots of businesses use WordPress these days and tons of roles for WordPress developer. Now, if you want to be a game designer or something, maybe you don't need that, but even if you want to market your own game, and not have to pay somebody to make your site, you know. So there's tons of benefits to learning this. Um, let's see. So from here, this is um. Let me see. Site access, right? Files. We're gonna need to have an FTP. So like FileZilla. Mm -hmm. All right, and then um with that we'll need um. So here's to hoping the wiki has this. Okay, we're going to check the wiki for that after. Um, but basically, from this diagram, right, the access that we talked about first is just using the site, adding content. Let's actually add a note. Um, so that's the site, right? This is going to be source files. Yeah. And then the other component is the database, right? Yeah. So let's make a note for that one. It's so logical the way you think this through, Brent. Thanks. Guys, this is a model of how you document professionally. I'll tell you guys this just to always reinforce it. My least favorite thing was doing documentation, but everywhere I go, they keep making me do it no matter what I'm doing, whether it's freelancing and a client's like, how do I get into my site? How do I edit something? Build it yourself. The agency I work at 
friends I have that do other jobs are always talking about different platforms and systems they use internally. If you're doing anything worth doing, you probably have to document and deal with like some sort of project management tool. If you're doing something small just to skirt by life, you'll never need to see one, but you kind of get what you put in, right? So this very critical skill. <laughs> yes, thank you. You're welcome. It's like someone telling you to floss. You're like, I don't really feel like flossing, but just do it. <laughs> You'll find out later that you should have. <laughs> All right. So from here, um, let's see. Let's add in some bullets. Okay, so this one's a little bit weird. Um, at build it yourself, we're very transparent, like John said, like the password. Um, so we'll just log in directly to the web hosting company. And then just click over to like the MySQL tool and then click auto login from there. But if you were working with people hypothetically that you don't know well enough and you have something you are scared of losing and you only want to give them limited access, you are able to give them a specific URL with specific user credentials to access MySQL for a single single database right they don't need your server login they just need that one piece of access mm -hmm. right so even from technically we don't even need files although we can access this via the the web hosting as well but if you guys have ever done web hosting you know file management it's like one folder at a time or like it, it's very painful whereas an ftp you just drag and drop and you back up all the files with like three clicks so that's the reason, you know, not because of a trust thing is because of its um, functionality. This one, because of trust, we can just not have to worry about extra URLs because from this server access, we can get FTP, to, FTP credentials if we ever need to change them. So I think it's more logical for internal people to know that. Um, that's not always going to be the case. So I just want to call that out in terms of permissions and stuff. So I have to look in the wiki, but I think Man, it's been a while. So I'm just going to put web host. Least web, right? Yeah. Okay. There we go. I had to let um, the engine start in my brain for a minute there. Least web. I it so you remember. <laughs> and then... um. All right, so basically, we'll need to document the URL for Lease Web for logging in. Mm -hmm. We'll need to put in the username, password, and we need the path um, to actually get to the MySQL um, database. Great. So what we want to do first before we do anything major, uh, our goal is to back up the documentation, right, first, mm -hmm. access and tools. Yeah. So now we know the tools. We generally know what we need for access. Everything should be in the wiki. So we'll go there and we'll check there first. Mm -hmm. And we understand the structure of WordPress before we execute anything in our plan. Um, and as a general practice moving forwards, I think we should make we should make it a point to back up the source files periodically, mm -hmm. but back up the database more aggressively. And um, maybe I can lean on you guys and challenge one of you to come up with a way to to automate that mm -hmm. in the near future um servers have a thing called cron jobs which are you can run a script automatically so if we can find a script to dump a database as like a sql file and just leave it on the server somewhere um that's doable i, I know that's definitely potential and there might be other mechanisms to do that Great. um in a rudimentary way would be to set up an automatic email that you email all team members like once a week. Hey, did you back up the database? Just as a reminder. Um, so those are two layers of um, protection as Great. we go forward. Great. All right. So let's um, check the wiki now, right? And see what we can figure out. And actually, I'll show you here. Updates, right? So we're on WordPress version. Let's see. I think it said on the dashboard. And I kind of skipped past it. Okay. PHP update required. So we're on a more vulnerable version of PHP right now. We can't upgrade PHP without breaking the site until we do other updates to make sure everything's on the latest. Um, let's see. 
Uh, I'm totally missing. Wait, where it is? WP five point five plus. So I think we're on five point something is my guess. Um, but if we look at updates. We're gonna see most things have updates. The theme has updates. WordPress has a new version, and several of the plugins um have updates. So best practice: back up your stuff, have a rollback point, run updates document which things you do as you update so if i do the theme like if i do wordpress first right i know there's only a single thing and there's only a single theme so that's not that bad to remember if it was a bigger project it's still a good habit to like just in excel or notepad say okay first i did wordpress i updated it check the site is it broken or is it working if it broke what things broke are they critical or are they minor like aesthetic um, if it's just like the menu looks funny, you fix that later with CSS. If you get like an error page, you roll back and go, uh oh, <laughs> um, you know, so you kind of want to understand it's like any experiment. What did I change? What was the outcome? Measure it. Um, from there, you know, let's say you did get an error and you know, you're going to roll back. You could try updating the plugins first, just in case one of the plugins is breaking compatibility with a new version of WordPress. Um, after this initial update, if we do this regularly, like, you know, even monthly, uh, we'll never get to a point where we're blowing up the site. Um, I'm more concerned because it's been a while since we've done this. Um, Astra and WordPress are very well maintained. Um, I know Metaslide is well maintained. Um, WP import, we probably don't even need anymore. I think we did that to bulk import some stuff at one point responsive carousel let's see so we have that one um so we have that's for the um the posts themselves the only one in this list that i'm concerned about is this guy to be honest um i don't use that one aggressively i did use this aggressively this one doesn't matter as much because google doesn't care about amp this just makes the site a little bit faster and we're not worried about those milliseconds at this point. Um, all right, so let's move forward. So let's go to the wiki. Let's build it yourself.com. Is it just slash wiki? I yeah. remember. Yes. Login. I'm going to try BIY support robot sushi one. Anyone know if that's right? <laughs> uh, let me check. Nope. <laughs> it was worth a shot. I'm not sure if it was at Gmail. And I know we've changed that a few times. Okay, hold on a second. Control F uh, wiki. It's B I U I D is B I Y support. And the password is robot sushi one. That's not promising. <laughs> no, that was my first try. I just double checked and I don't have caps lock on. And that didn't work? It did not. BIY support. All right, let me see. I can do a forgot password and see if we can figure no, that uh, uh, Hold on a second. Um, let me go to, sorry, guys. I have filler content. Don't worry. Um, so with WordPress, I actually want to show you guys something I'm working on. Um, this is kind of cool. So on the side of work, I was thinking about trying to make some marketing workshops, um, you know, basically find people who want to do what I do um, for either to sell it or just internally, you know, for their business. And I, I started making this in WordPress. And the cool thing with this is WordPress now has what's called the um, full theme editing. So when we first made the Builder Block site, it was much simpler, like WordPress, the core, but now the core of WordPress itself lets you go to edit site and you can literally bake out a page for every single part of your site. So the reason I show you this is that in the future, I envision us going through build it blocks and maybe making it more native and ripping away things that are extra. Um, but that's also a bigger lift than we need to deal with right now. Um, but if we look over here, blog home, like we see template parts, all archives, a homepage for a blog. The index is the homepage, a page, 
you know, with sidebar with no title with image. So these come pre-built with the theme that WordPress gives you, but you can go into anything, right? I can click the 404 page. Here's the, how the 404 page looks right now. I can add a graph, I can click into it. And with the block builder that we were using for, for um, builder blocks, you can go in, you can add in like a gallery, um, other parts, there's patterns, there's blocks, media. And I can just pull some of these things. And they also added what's called the query builder or uh, let me make sure I'm not messing up the name, query loop. So this the plugin we use for the post carousel you can actually query with a block now versus an additional plugin, which is one less thing to maintain, one less thing that can go wrong. And you can just take this and then you just add a little bit of JavaScript to make it you know, um, a carousel, right? So if you wanna bring in nine and only show three at once, you bring in all nine, you go to chat GTP and say, hey, here's my source code. I need to only show three at once and add arrows on each side using pure JavaScript. You get that, you just drop in like a reusable block for JavaScript somewhere, um, all with a native WordPress. And now you have your carousel without dealing with, um, without dealing with additional plugins. Um, so when I look at the plugin list, it's really not that bad. I think we, we followed a good practice where we said we don't want too much, um, but there's still some that we could delete that we're not using right here, right? These aren't in use, so those should be deleted. There's a new version of AMP, but it doesn't work with PHP. That might get fixed. But I think this just optimized some code for AMP. That's something we could probably get rid of at this point. Um, Meta slider, we're going to leverage for the videos right now. Um, but ultimately, we could also make a post type called um, gallery, and then we can associate post with a parent like so in the future we can really strip away this plugin this plugin these we can already delete we don't need this one we can get down to just the duplicate post plugin and maybe the importer if we need to bulk import and just delete them when we're not using them and then we have no plugins because wordpress core has expanded and got so much better um and the less code you have to maintain and the less pieces the lower the complexity of your project, the less room for error and for things to break. Um, so, uh, John, uh, that was my filler content. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you need more. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so I just put in the chat box, try this. Perfect. I'm not sure this doesn't, it seems strange, but um, it's 13, uh, 13 characters in the password. It worked. Okay. All right. It must have been something where we had like a password. Maybe it's when we had that site issue where something you had some guy come in and fix something. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. I, I think. Uh, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it's there. That's all we need. Yeah. All right. So now we go to passwords. Um, and also, okay. So here's another tip for you guys with the way the world is changing with AI. If I want this to document something specifically and we're internal where it's not awkward like a you know a presentation to an investor i can say hey chat gtp as you're listening to this transcript these next parts are extremely important i want this section to be documented as how to access our web server all right the first step is to go to buildityourself.com slash wiki the login is biy support for the username and the password is dollar sign robot sushi one with a capital R capital S and the one is numeric. So we want to go into our wiki. Once we log in, we're on the main page. Second step is to click passwords. From there, we're brought to the passwords page. The third step is to use the table of contents to find the lease web host in. Currently, that is section 1.6, and we click it, we'll scroll down the page. Now, the next step is to log in. We're going to click the login URL. Then we're going to copy and paste the email and the password. If you get an error message saying it can't find the login page, there'll be a link that says, looking for the customer portal. Click that, and it will redirect you.
Hey, John, uh, the, yeah. the password didn't work on that one. Please swap. Okay. okay. Um, let me go back and find the password. Uh, Lee Webb. Chat GTP. We're looking for the password, so hold on for the next step. All right, so you guys see how that works, right? Like the more context you give in your transcription. So if you're trying to document something, you can record yourself. Um, or just use Google Docs and hit like um, dictate, you know, microphone, um, speech to text, whatever they call it. And then you just give very clear signals to the AI and then it will extract stuff better. Um, AI is like a child, you know, if you tell it it's bedtime soon, it will never get ready. If you say it's bedtime now, they might start to get ready. Um, so you just need to give more, um, more structure to what you're saying and more clarity and the better it will output. And that also forces you to think better. All right, I'm gonna try, I see in the chat. Right, try that, I'm not sure. Robot power too. Looks like it's working. So we are in. Guys, you can tell how difficult it is and how important it is to keep documentation. Um, Brent, put a huge number of hours into creating this wiki, uh, but it, I haven't kept it updated as I should have. I just keep my passwords locally, which is absolutely the wrong thing to do. <laughs> at work, and I think at Build It Yourself, when I was like doing more with the operations and then at the agency, one of the goals, one of the questions that I'm often seeing like any C-level kind of person. And I know John will kind of be like, I know you are more humble, but you're a CEO, build it yourself, right? Um, the owner of Market Vantage too, right? Um, the goal is always, how do we scale? How do we put in infrastructure that will enable teams to work together, communicate, and do things in the most efficient manner in a repeatable manner? Because businesses succeed when they're when you can replicate your success and when you have a formula that's different than other people's, that's better. And then if you can replicate those results and then you have something that you can grow, right? For every 10 workshop leaders, we need one manager to manage them or something. Like you have some numbers that scale with that. You're in a position to take people's money and make more money. Um, so documentation goes along with that philosophy of trying to scale your business up. All right, so from here, um, actually, I'm gonna talk to chat GTP, all right? So I'm gonna drop this in the transcription. All right, we got the password. Um, that was the last step to gain access. So that part, we're gonna move on to another part for documentation, chat GTP. This next section is how to access MySQL databases via the server dashboard. Uh, Brent, before you get to the next uh, section, yeah. can we just go around the horn here? Um, Dan, do you find this interesting and um, useful? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got a little bit lost. I will yeah. need to watch like the recording, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty important for all of us to know like the basics. Rodrigo, any questions? Do you understand uh, the importance of documentation and Yeah, uh, actually, I recently lost some important code because I didn't document. So. Mm -hmm. Great. I, I understand. Okay. Ryan and Ari, I assume you're on board. Any questions before we go to the next step? No, we're good. Okay. All right. Yep, all good. Thank you. I have one question before we go on. Dan, I know you said you got a little lost. Out of curiosity, um, is there any specific part um, or parts that weren't clear? But I could always follow up with you later too. Oh, um, it's more well. like um, all the pages you logged into. Understood. It's like there, there are a lot of pages. So it, it was like pretty much that. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, that's not so bad. So I just wanted to make sure we didn't <clears throat> go too fast there. No, no, no. <clears throat> the theory is good. It's just yeah. The, uh, 
Password and the output password. from this meeting is going to be that PowerPoint. We'll have all the steps and then we'll use the transcript to document. So Great. I don't even think you'll have to watch the video. Um, if we do documentation the right way, you should be able to read through a single page on the wiki and Great. this whole thing, the essence of it should be in there after. Great. Thank you, Brent. Just have to keep talking about the documentation. I never understood why you did that when I was younger, but you know, <laughs> now that I'm on this side of it, um, it's needed. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna be weird and you know flag the chat GTP again. Um, but the more of, of those little markers you do in your transcript, um, it would be helpful. Now I'm exaggerating a little bit, right, to kind of emphasize to you guys how you can leverage AI for that. But ultimately, you can just say. Okay, this section we need to document. This is section two. This is how we are going to access the MySQL database. That sounds a lot more normal when you're talking to people and you can still do that and it will be enough context. Um, all right, so it's somewhere in here. <laughs> Let's see, it's been a while and they changed stuff. My product dedicated server. Uh, computing dedicated. I'm sorry, Brent. Uh how are you using chat GPT? Okay, so here's the logic, right? Because we're gonna do documentation. Right. I asked you to record, because I'm gonna take the recording and I have this tool called Descript. Yeah. And what Descript does is it allows me, I'll show you guys this real quick. Um, I'm gonna be upgrading soon anyways. So ignore my time limit on here. But what I do is I just take a video of me, right? anything and I just drop it in so I'll go to like new file let's see new here it is so I'll do like new audio right now normally I can just drag and drop a video if it's from a meeting um, but if I'm going to dictate I can use this tool or I can use google docs for free I'm um, just do speech to text mm -hmm. but I'll do something like this um, and it'll transcribe the video yes wow and summarize it or wow yeah so as an example this is going to be a procedure on how to document documents step one is to open your lunchbox and take out three apples that is it okay so that's a really short process right so now it's going to analyze the audio and once that's completed i can just copy and paste now, I use this tool specifically for more complex things like meetings mm -hmm. because you're going to have multiple speakers. It can actually detect multiple speakers and you can label the voices, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so this is going to be a procedure on how document documents. Okay, so I take this, right? I can go to chat GTP, right? I like 3.5 better than 4. I, I get the plus version and I find that it's lazy. It's way too human. You know, you need to really drive incentive with it. Mm -hmm. 3.5 is more like a robot and does what I tell it. I kind of like that better. <laughs> if, you know, I don't want to have to convince emotionally that my AI needs to work. Um, all right, so I'll say um, here is a meeting transcript for a process. Can you write the documentation? Aria, are they teaching you in school how to use tools to program? How to use AI tools to program? Uh, actually, in one of my classes last summer, we had an assignment uh, that was using ChatGPT to code a thing like a simple yeah. uh, application, uh -huh. just so that we could have like some experience using it and see like. Yeah. where where it gets like complicated uh -huh. when trying to use it to build like bigger things yeah and like tested li its limits uh -huh. but we we did get like uh one assignment on that and did were you impressed with how good or how bad it was uh well it's pretty good for small stuff but if you try to build like a bigger program on a single session which was what they wanted us to do it, it started like a misremembering stuff from earlier, or at least on the free version, it did that. Got it. Well, this is ChatGPT for documentation. So yeah. great. Sorry yeah, for interrupting, Brent. Mm -hmm. No, no, that, that's a great question. And I, I've had the same experience. So my son, I'm trying to make him learn everything I think he'll need to know 
to have like, you know, success in the future. And AI is part of that. So I've already like had them, we created a game in Python and I don't do Python coding, but ChatGTP does. And we made like a user interface for some text game. And what we found was the exact same thing. You ask it for something, it can give you code, but the larger the request and the more you try to have it understand the context previously, it gets confused. Um, even at work for search engine optimization, I'll ask it for suggestions for different web pages, right? I'll feed it URLs, titles, and some context. And I tell it very specifically, like, here's some keywords, here are some URLs. I need a suggested title. Like, let's say we're going to make like 100 blog posts for somebody. I'm trying to come up with title, URL, um, the heading, and all that kind of stuff, the, the top level items, not the actual content, just the idea, right? And the meta info. and it will do great. I like, hey, put, I'll put it in a CSV format. I need these columns. After I run that and I keep giving it new keywords and URLs, right? Doing it in batches so it doesn't overload. By like the third or fourth request, it starts like giving me paragraphs again. And I have to go back and say, hey, what's wrong with you? Are you paying attention? Go back and read. Like I asked you for this. And then it goes back and it's like, oh, I'm, I apologize. And then it starts doing it correct. And it, then it loses context later. And it's just fascinating. Um, it's really weird, but yeah. you know, surely it will get better and better and better. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, my suggestion to you guys is don't use it for anything automated. Like, really make sure you're looking at the results. And just like, for instance, I gave it my transcript. It took the liberty to assume I was joking. But what if I really need apples to document documents? Right. Granted, it, it understood this was funny, but what if it wasn't funny? That's something I would need to delete and modify. And then it starts talking about imaginary apples. Now, the reason it did this was it I only gave it one sentence, right? Or two sentences. It, it tried to expand because it doesn't have enough info to write. Like that's more concise than what a doc, documentation would be. So this is a poor example. But if we gave it like a, you know, one hour transcript, it should be able to um, do amazing things with that. In the more context in your, in your prompt, like I only said, please adapt this document, you know, adapt this. That's not very helpful for it either, right? Um, yeah, so bottom line. I read about a job um, uh, that paid $350,000 for a prompt engineer and the prompt engineer did not even have an engineering degree. I think they had a psychology degree. So uh, just an example of how valuable uh, people who know how to ask good questions are. $350,000 a year job for asking AI questions. Man. Yeah, it's, um, it's a new world where college matters, but also the skills and examples you can show of your work. I mean, it's another reason why documenting is good, right? If you're used to documenting, you'll have wonderful case studies and projects. Um, you go to any big website, like um, really to drive this, um, like two of the clients we work with at um, Market Vantage, and there's lots of people who do this, I've noticed, and I really learned this. All right, so this is a software, um, like a scheduling software for like fitness and wellness companies. And if you go to the about section, you're gonna find, where is it? This case study resources, let me see, client stories, right? Camunda, they do like um decision making and stuff. Like they, it's like a business decision making kind of thing, business process management. They do flow charts and you can run like the actual flow chart with data, input, output junk. Um, if you go here and I think somewhere in here, there's case studies, case studies. And the benefit of this now, if you look at these kind of sites and think about your personal portfolio website and you think, you know, you could have a project where you say, I made a personal website and show some screenshots. But what John's really trying to instill in you, build it yourself philosophy is what these large companies do. You know, so if I click on any of these, I don't even have to look to know. They're going to say, what was the goal? What was the problem? How did the software help overcome that problem? Right. You know, a little backstory and they have a whole write up about it. And the reason they do that, increased agility, right? An open architecture that increased agility, they got to market faster and they had greater operational 
efficiency. So they kept the key points up top if you want to dig in deep. So any project you have, if you have like, I don't know, like five projects you list on a projects page on your personal site, I'd really recommend that you build out an individual page for each while it's fresher in your mind. Explain the whole goal, like the how your PowerPoint is structured, right? Problem, mission. Here's my issue. That was the challenge. This is how we overcame it. This is why this solution worked. You tell a company that, they're going to love you. You know, if you just tell them, I, you know, it's like mental math versus explaining your work. You know, if you can explain your work, they trust you to replicate your logic. If you don't have logic, they think you're lucky. Um, John, is that a fair? Uh, the process is often more important than the end result. Um, yeah. 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 Very well put. Okay. Right, so... and, uh, Brent, just to uh, keep this, we have another meeting coming up at noon. Uh, we'll, I hope it's okay if we can finish this off next week. Yeah. 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 Okay, where to just get to a break point in the next five minutes or so? Definitely. Uh, so, okay, so my question that I'm asking myself is where do I find <laughs> the um, actual MySQL? Um, maybe there's a search bar on the homepage. So I haven't been in here in a long time and they moved things. Um, I'm guessing maybe hosting and maybe we can go into our hosting account this way. Let's see. able to complete the action it's active that's not promising <laughs> okay my favorite thing on a website especially when i'm looking for account info is when i see giant red text that says issues um that's sarcasm by the way in case the ai picks that up wrong <laughs> um let's see i don't know if let's um let's check the passwords and see if there's a better login section Okay, so that's lease web hosting. Okay, so we went to lease web hosting here, December 2021. Plesk panel. So let's try the Plesk panel. So I think we have Windows hosting, and Plesk, I think, is equivalent to cPanel on Linux, if I'm not mistaken. So my guess is that maybe this login is more of the billing kind of information and like product level. Mm -hmm. This one might be the actual meat of what we're looking for. So we'll find that out right now. I'm hoping that works. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, so that didn't work. I'm gonna just double check. I have no spaces or anything. Uh, John, would you check to see if you have a Plesk panel for lease web login? I think we can. And that might be a good point to cut anyways, because yeah. once we get in there, we can access the MySQL. Yeah. Um, and that's where you can update the, oh, it worked this time. Okay. So that documentation's right. So let me copy this, right? That was this here. So we'll put this here. Um, FTP, we got to double check, but that's here. And we'll make this prettier before we send it to you guys. Um, and site access is correct. Okay, so we have the overview, we have the logins, and um, let's see, I'll close out this one. So okay. what we would need to do, they have databases right there. You can just literally dump the whole SQL database, um, but we have a lot of databases. So I think next week, what I'll show you guys is inside of the WordPress installation files that we access via FTP. There's a configuration file that specifies which database. We'll use that and document which one that is. We'll come back in here because there's a few different block ones and we'll figure out which one we're supposed to back up. We'll download that. We'll back up the files at the same time for files alone. I might even do this pre-workshop and then just show you um, because realistically at that point, we're just waiting for files to transfer, which is silly mm -hmm. doing a workshop. Thank you, Brent. So, yeah, like we'll do that. And then um, we can do the updates and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think if it, do you guys think it would be beneficial to see me troubleshoot if there's any issues or is it better if I just run this stuff? Like I could probably do this like the hour before 11 next week. 
and then um, just record it or something? I mean, what's better? Good question. I mean, guys, uh, the, we we want to. The goal is we want to put you in a position to keep our documentation current, and Ari, uh, we want to put you in a position to start making coding changes. Um, so, is it helpful for you to watch Brent troubleshoot rather than you burn the extra hour? Um, Brent on doing it yourself. I, I recommend we just watch you. I think we can learn a lot okay. from watching you troubleshoot. Unless you guys, you know, have a, a different interest. Okay, let's do that. Let's meet at 11 o'clock next week, Brent. And and we'll watch you upload and uh, back up and, and troubleshoot. Uh, yeah, I'm hopeful it's quick. Um... Honestly, after you see it once, I think you guys will be in a good position because it's really just um, like if things break, it's just how do you re-upload the MySQL database? You guys might already know that from other things you might have done. Um, now, the cool thing about that is that extends beyond WordPress. Any MySQL database project you work on, it would be the same kind of philosophy of backing up and updating if you're rolling back. So you can you know, apply that to any project. Um, my sequel. Okay. Right. So I know you guys got to, it's about 12. So thanks, Brent. That was great. Really, really perfect. Thank you, Brent. Thanks, Ken, Rodrigo, Ari, Ryan. Um, Ari, if you could stay on, we're about to start the IU meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Brent, yes. for the explanation. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget to stop and restart the recording. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So